Who are you? You look vaguely familiar. I fixed it. <laughs> oh, Sid. Do, I insist. That never happens. The new Cruella movie is another feature-length villain origin story that makes it seem like Disney saw the billion dollars made by Joker and wanted to cash in on that by pushing their own to-be bad guy down the road of evil madness. Only to then stop halfway in after realizing they're Disney and that they can't actually do half the things other studios can. With a society that abandons him and treats him like trash! Call the police, I'll Gene. tell you what you get! Call the police! Get... There's the rest. Where is the rest? And whether Cruella as a movie really was influenced by Joker or not, most of the criticism I've heard against it does come down to this topic of pulling of the punches. That Disney is so enslaved to their own brand now that they successfully watered down a repulsive chain-smoking dog killer Poison them, drown them, bash them in the head. What the to an affable non-smoking dog lover because that earlier stuff is just way too evil for today. Which I guess is fair criticism. The thing is, I don't think I've ever seen the original movie so I personally lack the context to add any insight into this topic. But what I very much do carry context and insight on is the topic of Disney's Cruella being yet another new quote-unquote female empowerment movie, just as we've covered before with the likes of Charlie's Angels and Birds of Prey. How does the saying go? I am woman, hear me roar. Well, that wasn't much of a thing back in 1964, but it was about to be. Oh, sh here we go again. And the similarities are definitely there. Cruella as a character is very much like Harley Quinn, down to the zany outlandish personality as well as looks and edgy voiceover narration. Whereas the world of Cruella is very much like that of Charlie's Angels in terms of the social messaging it pushes. And so, with all the similarities there, this movie must then stumble into the exact same pitfalls as the ones before it. Except it doesn't, it's actually a major improvement. Now, whether it's to the point of making it a good movie, I'll leave that up to you, but it's definitely a step in the right direction that Hollywood should learn from going forward. I still think Hollywood should learn from Felicity Jones' recent female empowerment movies, but the spotlight is on Cruella now, and therefore, so is the responsibility. So today... No, uh, Mando, how do you make your videos? I'm kinda in the middle of a video right now. So today, let's look at Cruella through the lens of a female empowerment film and find out how it avoids the pitfalls that usually destroy the likes of it. How Cruella as a character improves on Harley Quinn, how the world here improves on that of Charlie's Angels, how this movie overall fends off the major problem that has turned so many of its kind into unsuccessful flops. Here's a few things to keep in mind when making an empowerment film for women or really any other gender or race or religion or whatever. The first empowerment aspect Hollywood should learn here is the fact that Cruella is a character that young women and women in general can actually find empowering, which is achieved by giving her a strong, all-encompassing purpose fashion. Remember how Harley Quinn in Birds of Prey was mostly moping around aimlessly without any motivations outside of eating a sandwich until a man came in and forced one on her? Wait, wait, you lost something, right? You lost something, I heard you say it. Well, Cruella's motivation for existing exists as soon as she does. I saw the world differently than everyone else. What? Well, that's not the pattern. You have to follow the pattern as a way of doing things. And the first thing you'll notice about this fashion motivation is that no matter how much of an impenetrable obstacle it seems to be for her, she still keeps at it. Cruella goes to school looking different than the norm and gets picked on. A skunk's got loose in the building. Nice jacket. <laughs> But she still keeps going in looking the way she does because that's the look she likes. She goes to work at a fashion shop to become a designer and gets neglected like a lower class citizen whose sense of appearance and behavior couldn't be more objectively wrong. Banana on your cheek. <laughs> But again, she still keeps going in and bothering her boss about being a designer because that's what she wants to be. Overall, no matter how hard and frequently Cruella gets knocked down for her fashion aspiration, that aspiration is so strong that she never stays down to mope around or whine and instead always stands right back up to keep trying. And that's the type of hero that is not only inspiring and empowering, but also someone the audience wants to support and see succeed. Then, remember how Harley Quinn was also a passive, inactive character who got pushed by the story and other characters in it? If you want my mercy, 
You're gonna get me my diamond. Well, in Cruella, Cruella's fashion desire is what pushes things to happen. She gets a job working for the Baroness because of the crazy art display she herself made. This address, 5 a.m. Don't be late. She progresses at her job because she will not let go of her opinions even if it means disagreeing with her boss who nobody ever dares disagree with. I think it's better. Actually it is. I mean, this movie even has the exact same narrative beat as Birds of Prey where the MacGuffin jewel gets swallowed and has to be taken out the back. The difference being that Cruella still remains in the driver's seat. Whereas Harley Quinn just waited around for the jewel to eventually come out, Cruella simultaneously keeps progressing her plan of becoming the new queen of fashion. Whereas Harley Quinn had nothing to do with the jewel being swallowed in the first place, Cruella is the one who caused it to happen by trying to steal it. And when it's your hero's own successes and failures that make makes things happen and causes changes in the world, not only is that again empowering but also entertaining to watch. And also, Mendo, how do you edit your videos and how can I do it? Not now. And also, remember how Harley Quinn was basically an insufferable idiot who puked into other people's things while drunk and overcame obstacles by sheer luck? Fine. It was dumb luck. Well, Disney, it seems, allows their female heroes to be not just dumb, but actually skillful and talented. The prophecy is true. When Cruella gets drunk at work, she doesn't just puke all over the place and blow sh up for no good reason. No, she finally unleashes that inner designer that's been kept locked up all this time. And the result is raw and fantastic. That girl put together a better window display than I've seen here for 10 years. But she's a funny zany woman. How can that be? Wouldn't it be better if she's a dumb dumb who just got lucky? Cruella is charismatic. She's fearless. She's got an eye for the extravagant. Underneath that zany exterior, she's actually really intelligent. She's still very much flawed, vulnerable, corruptible. At the end of the day, she's a small woman that grown men can easily physically overpower if they really want to. But strictly in terms of her life dedication of fashion mixed with a splash of street crime, she's one of the strongest, most talented people you'll find. And when you compare that to an insufferable imbecile who survives by sheer luck, oh, a pin. and godlike creatures who can shine at everything they do, which do you think is most empowering for young women? <laughs> and all of this is born from Cruella's core character purpose of fashion, the thing that makes her earn these qualities we can respect and admire about her, the same way Arthur Fleck does with his dedication to comedy in Joker. Because if you want your empowered character to be actually powerful, you have to find the source where that power comes from. Filmento, how can I make same videos as you and Seven? Okay, since you guys won't stop asking me, let's just quickly answer this now before we move on. If it is your core life purpose to become a super popular film YouTuber like me, here's how you do it. You go to your video editor and you add in voiceover where you make highly intelligent educational points about a movie. You add in the right clip from the movie to corroborate that point. And then you also add in a super funny green screen clip that serves as a punchline to your point. And there you go, quality content everybody loves. Yeah, this movie looks very good, but then becomes very bad and puts you to sleep. And if you're still looking for the right video editor, I highly recommend Wondershare Filmora 10, which is not only affordable, but also very easy to use. It's really simple to add in clips, cut them, move them. There's tons of time-saving templates like transitions, effects, and the filters. You can do green screen effortlessly. You can motion track automatically. I mean, they even added in this new auto highlight feature that basically cuts your longer videos down for you. Pretty great stuff to begin your editing career with. Wondershare is sponsoring the video with a free trial of Filmora 10, so check it out with the link below to see if it's for you. And also, if you want a chance to unlock the full thing for no charge, comment below what you think about the trial and they're gonna pick one winner at random. Now please, stop asking me. The second thing to take here is the fact that the empowering social thematic message Cruella wants to convey is conveyed in an actual three-dimensional way that can be taken seriously and not just laughed at. See, in Charlie's Angels, the main empowering point was that the world looks down on women and that as a woman, you are still allowed and able to choose what you want to do. Fixing cars, driving a taxi, installing some drywall. Why not? No. 
and it would have been so easy to do the exact same two-dimensional thing here. You could have set this movie in a status quo where the fashion industry is run by men and have Cruella come in as the only woman to show that women can make fashion as well. But the reason this isn't done is because it's not empowering, it's just moronic. Because of course women can design fashion, nobody in the audience would take doubt in that seriously. You'd be trying to prove a message that today no longer needs proving. I mean, I want all my options available so I can decide for myself. Okay. And so what Cruella does instead is take the crux of this idea of having something to prove and dress it into a bit more realistic, impactful form. The form of fashion being made up of right and wrong. For example, the reason the shop owner treats Cruella like trash isn't because he's a guy and all guys hate women for no reason. It's because in his eyes, she just doesn't fit into the norm of what fashion is. I do wish there was a scene early on where Cruella shows off her designs to her boss, which he doesn't like and therefore demotes her to cleaning toilets, but the point is that the movie sets up this believably realistic established order of things that is up to Cruella to break. Like soon after, when Cruella wakes up after unleashing her inner designer, the boss pulls her in to fire her for basically vandalizing the store until… Better window display than I've seen here for 10 years. Here, here. In other words, Cruella takes a shot at showing that her non-standard designs are fashion as well. No. No. And now gets her first bit of validation for it. And that's empowering, that's proving something, that's what makes the audience go, hell yeah, I knew that fashion police douchebag was wrong. To better highlight what I'm getting at, look at the relationship Cruella has with the Baroness, which again has nothing to do with women and not women, but basically comes down to the fact that the Baroness decides what fashion is. When it's time to talk, she does, and you shut up. <gasps> Why are you speaking? When it's time for feedback, she gives it and you take it. You're short, you're fat, your revenues are down 15%. Your turn. Overall, the central established order this movie sets up is that fashion is what this one all-powerful higher authority makes it be. In such an audacious way, the audience broke into rapturous applause at first sight. She really is a genius. And the whole basis for the empowerment then is Cruella having to break this established order. When she dares to speak up in the Baroness's presence, that's one step. When she dares to improve the Baroness's work, that's another step. When we, for example, get to this gala sequence where the Baroness has set tight limitations as to what is acceptable, that's the first major step. Observe the dress code. No. Gala. So, as is the case with the fashion industry as a whole, the Baroness has created a very strict norm for this gala that accepts you only in black and white. And then in comes Cruella in her alter ego costume for the first time to do what she's always done, the opposite. And I will say that this red dress reveal, for me at least, is one of the stronger female empowerment movie moments I've seen in a while. Not because Cruella is a woman who forces her way into an all-male gala or something, but because she dares to confront this obligatory norm that society has accepted at face value. That's the whole purpose of the movie. Cruella going head-to-head -head with the Baroness, aka the one almighty higher power, to change what fashion is and can be and show everyone watching that no matter how prevalent the current pre-established standard might be, you don't necessarily have to force yourself to look the part. Which for young girls, for example, again, is much more impactful than the straight up message that girls should be allowed to choose their own careers, which just makes them regress and wonder if it's actually normal for there to still be doubt in that. The things Cruella does in this film aren't by any means exclusive to being a woman, but it doesn't take away from her being one, which is the point. Just because you're making a female empowerment movie doesn't mean the empowerment has to come strictly from the hero being female. We don't need those movies anymore. Today, it's enough that the hero does realistic things in a realistic world with realistic people and happens to be female while doing them. Because truth is that in real life, there's much more to people than just their gender or race or religion. And instead of your movie trying to fight progression by arguing against that, it should maybe just embrace it. It is. <gasps> Thank you.
The third empowerment lesson to take here is that even though this movie lifts one group of people up, it doesn't resort to doing it by tearing down another. If you take Charlie's Angels for example, you'll quickly find that it's a very anti-male movie. Almost every single male character in it either hates or somehow mistreats women for no real established reason and therefore exists mainly just to be punished and beaten down by the female heroes in a two-hour showcase of moral, mental and physical female superiority. I compressed his carotid and deoxygenated his brain stem. Should we toss him? Yeah, let's do it. Do you think Ralph's gonna be okay? Yeah, I'm sure he's fine. He seemed fine, right? Yeah. I prepared a mini feast to honor our beautiful friend. I would love to apply a firm touch to your back. Do you consent? And even though it's 100% in your right to make that movie, you also need to acknowledge that there are consequences to it. But in Cruella, even though we've been talking about women and girls here today, that's not actually who this movie's for. Because by not treating its female empowerment angle at face value and instead dressing it in a smarter, more universal form, the enjoyment of it is made non-dependent on what the audience has or hasn't got between their legs. Let's for example go back to the purpose point. When Cruella has to keep getting back up due to being bullied by boys at school, it's not because she's a girl and boys always bully girls for no reason. It's because her fashion desire makes her different. Nice jacket. When Cruella adamantly drives her fashion career forward, it's not because the industry is run by men and therefore in need of complete toppling. It's because being a designer is what means the most to her. Oh my god, my chance. The one I always wanted. When Cruella shows off her talents in fashion or anything else around it, it's never to flip off the entire world of men by saying that I am woman and better than you, but instead just to say that I'm better. And because this stuff is built deeper than just the most basic superficial factor of gender, we can all relate to it regardless of gender. Some of us might not know anything about being a woman or working in fashion, but what we all do know about is having to struggle due to desires that are different, about putting in endless hours of work to improve at those desires. We all know about that inner drive to be better at our desires than the person next to us. We can understand that, feel that, take part in and support that. Same thing with the social messaging point. When Cruella gets neglected at work by a boss, it's not because men by default just enjoy oppressing women. It's because in his standardized limited world, what she has to offer carries no value, which we can all relate to. Excuse me, sir. I had a thought about the front window. When Cruella dares to break norm by speaking when she shouldn't and showing up in a way she shouldn't, that's a universal message that conveys something to all of us. When Cruella gets a W in terms of the angle of female empowerment, it's not a W just for women, but through different angles also for everyone else. You're a fool. That girl put together a better window display than I've seen. And if Hollywood can learn just one lesson from Cruella, I really hope it's this fact that cinematic empowerment isn't a zero-sum game. Game. Just because you lift women up doesn't mean you have to bring men down. Giving something to one group of people doesn't necessarily require you to take it away from another. You're allowed to do that, of course. If you want to rant about the evils of men, that's fine. What do you learn? Shopping mall. But then don't complain when men don't want to pay money to see it. You can make a two-hour film ridiculing Scientology, but you cannot then expect Scientologists to show up to support it. That makes no sense. You're stepping over a line now. You're stepping over a line. You know you are. Don't say what other people. Take and responsibility for what you... And so, in order to make these female or whatever gender or race or religion empowerment movies successful, you need to start thinking of them less as movies about this specific group of people and more as movies about people who belong in this specific group and reach the other groups through that. Because even though a lot of your potential audience won't know or even care about being a woman, they all do know and can care about being human.